series of wines. Um, this is a relatively new endeavor for us. Uh, we started in 2014. The idea was born long before that, but you know, when you grow grapes and you only make wine once a year, it takes a little bit for these things to gestate and sort of fully form. So we're 100% a state property. Um, here on the map behind me, you can see Bethel Heights proper, Justice below, and now Lumen Vineyard, which we purchased just last year. So we now farm about 90 total acres. Um, this concept was sort of born out of another. When my parents and my aunt and uncle moved here, um, they started bottling individual parcels in 1991 called blocks. You can see, like most vineyards are laid out in little geometric quadrants. Uh, a lot of that's done to separate plant material, clonal material, uh, dates of planting. You need empty spaces to put fruiting bins when we're harvesting the grapes. You need somewhere for the tractor to go and pick them up. So they're sort of naturally set as these little blocks. And since 1991, the flat block, the southeast block, and the West Block, uh, planted in 79 and 77 respectively, um, have been bottled separately. But what we started looking at is, you know, our property is, is more than blocks, it's, it's slopes and benches and slopes again, some parts that are protected from the weather and others that aren't. And a lot of these factors, both, you know, geologic, geographic, you know, topographic and, and climate, um, sort of speak to something that exists beyond blocks, beyond these little quadrants. Um, so these wines, uh, it's the first time we've really shown them outside of our tasting room. We don't make very much. Uh, as I mentioned, we started them in 2014. These are 15s. Uh, the Shallows is first. Um, it is, it shares this little flat bench, very rocky bench with our flat block. So the flat block was planted in 1979. Shallows was planted in 2002. So significantly younger, tighter space. And yet, with all the blind tastings that we do, I found that I was getting them mixed up more often than not, really starting in 2012. Which made us begin to think, is it something more, it's just the flat walks older, the shallows younger, but the similarities are more born geologically and geographically. They both share this very rocky little bench, which sits right above the cauldron. So, Pumar, uh, our south block, Pumar planted in 1979. Uh, same age as the flat block and the southeast block. I'm not really sure why it was never bottled separately because to me, in terms of quality, it's always been on par with its two sibling blocks. Um, and then we have the currents, and this one's a little bit more conceptual. It's from the western side of our property, uh, very exposed to wind. For whatever reason, the ravine that cuts the property in half does a great job of protecting the eastern side from, from the pervasive Aeolian winds we get from the Vendusa corridor. Um, we get a lot of wind here. Uh, which leads to thicker skins as the uh, vines try to protect the seeds. So there's a lot of uh, structure here, a lot of phenolic potential. Um, and it really is sort of one of those interesting parts where you think about terroir as being the soil, of being the aspect. Well, it's also how weather moves through your property. And here we find it has a very direct impact on the kind of wines we're making. Um, and then the last, which ironically is itself a block, is uh, the high wire. It's our Chardonnay cuttings taken from the Wente Vineyard in Livermore, California, and just stuck in the ground uh, at Bethel Heights. It, like the southeast, like the south and the cauldron, is unrooted. Half of our property is still unrooted and ungrafted. Uh, the name references the trellis system. It's something we would probably never do again, but uh, it is on a Geneva double curtain or a single, alternating single and double high wire trellis. So they look like scarecrows out there. The vines are almost as tall as me. Uh, the fruiting wires at the top as opposed to down closer to your knee as it would be on a vertical shoot position, which is most of what we have here at Bethel Heights. Um, and it really has become, you know, sort of a, a, a hallmark of, of what Chardonnay can do on our property. For many, many years, it didn't really ever get fully ripe just because it was too cold. But really, starting with 2012, it's made, I think, um, it's sort of the, the, the broadest range of outcomes on our property. It can be by far and away one of the best things we make. And in cooler years, again, it can be a struggle, but I think in 2015, um, it's the best wine we made of, of either couple. 